Entrepreneurs can get stuck in their head. If you dream of changing the world, but you're not sure where to start, the Ad Valued Entrepreneurs podcast will help you transform your life and business. This podcast is for entrepreneurs who want more freedom and fulfillment from their work so they can live the life that they desire. You deserve it, and it is possible. It's time for you to add value. This episode is brought to you by Perfect Publishing. Perfect Publishing is a different approach to publishing a book. Perfect Publishing is sharing a project of hope. We carefully chose heroes of hope who exemplify living a life they created through faith, hope, patience, and persistence. No matter what page you open to in this mini cube of hope, you will find a leader with a big heart. You see you are not alone. The authors may share similar challenges that only hope and action could resolve. Get your free ebook at getadoseofhope.com. Get a dose of hope.com. Today's guest is Marissa Shadrick. Marissa helps online coaches, course creators, and service based entrepreneurs transform their ideas into a marketable message. Visionaries can use the power of focus and accountability to turn knowledge into revenue through Marissa's coaching programs and mastermind groups. Marissa enjoys helping people become visible online to create positive change in the world. Marissa Shadrick and Robert discuss building a business facing fear, and telling stories that matter. In a world full of noise, it is important that entrepreneurs be willing to share their unique stories and find their people, the people they can serve naturally and easily and help get the most effective results. Marissa, thank you so much for jumping on the show today. I I mean, obviously, we've already had great fun just in the green room, so I'm excited to uh, share this conversation with the audience. Otherwise, you know, they're missing out on all the fun we're having. Yeah, absolutely. Hello, Robert. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Absolutely. So I always have the guests just start with their own entrepreneurial journey and just share, you know, obviously the highlights and the the things that uh, got you to what you're doing today. Awesome. Well, in a nutshell, so I don't go back too far. I was in ministry for 30 years. I was a stay at home mom. I had been in corporate, but I kind of left that to kind of just raise my kids. And at the time, a lot of parents were, that's when women were really going out into corporate life and really spreading their wings. I was like the only one that stayed home. So all the kids would come to my house. So my house was like the destination for all the junior high and teenagers. And I loved it. I loved every minute of it. But when I started to see that I would have an opportunity to do something for myself, I thought, well, what do I want to do? And I started writing and then I started taking some writing classes, going to writers conferences. And I thought I really want to start kind of send putting out articles out there, publishing articles that would bring encouragement, sort of an extension of what I was doing within the walls of ministry. But I wanted to take it further. And the Internet was fairly new. And I thought, you know, the power of the internet. And I did, I published articles, really loved the writing journey. The writing sort of led to speaking because I thought now I want to dip my feet into the speaking and really learn about public speaking. And one of the things in both of these areas, I was the writer that didn't want anybody to read my writing. And I was a speaker afraid of speaking in public. So I picked the two things that I really was afraid to do, and I dove into it, and um, and it turned out really, really well. I think those two things, the writing and the speaking, were foundational for where I am today, because later on when I started doing more online and I started learning about marketing online, I ended up becoming a, a board certified copywriter, and now I'm a, uh, Mike Kim has a You Are The Brand certification, I'm also certified with him, and I coach clients and I do done for you copy, and I still do a lot of uh, a lot of writing on my own too. So all of it, I think, those two things, speaking and writing, communication, if you will, is so important to have a foundation in that. And I see writing as my friend. I see writing as not only cathartic, but also a way to to be able to uncover new ideas that I can pass on to other people and encourage other people. So writing is sort of my friend, my friend that helps me with all the stuff that I do. Even in the speaking, the writing was what helped me get a winning international speech that led me to become the top 100 speaker in the world and speak at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. So it was all with writing. It was all just 
having this desire to write and it kind of snowballed. That's so, that's so good. All right. So I, I love that, you know, the writing led to speaking, but the, the speaking was really writing um, and writing was, was foundational and all that. But yeah. you mentioned two really big fears in there. Obviously the fear of the fear of people reading your writing and then the fear of, of public speaking, putting your words out there from, from a stage. Um, so I want to dig into how did you, how did you face those fears and, and, and push through what was helpful for you in pushing through those? Yeah, I was really fearful about a lot of things, very insecure um, as a young person, and it kind of spilled into my adulthood. And I really wanted to, I asked myself, if I could do anything, and there were no obstacles, no limitations, what would you do? And writing came out, and I thought, that'd be the last thing that I would pick, you know, if I really dwelt on it. But I decided, you know what, I'm going to do it, because I love books, I love reading, and so I decided to just start writing. And when I went to a writer's conference, I prepared a manuscript, the very first manuscript. And I had asked a writing friend, I, I asked her, can you give me some advice? Because I'm going to submit an article for publication. And she said, Marissa, just cut a vein and let it bleed. In other <laughs> words, in other words, share emotion, right? Don't just give people information just share story, share emotion. And so I did, and it was a personal story and I always have a takeaway, right? You want every point should have a story and every story should have a point. And I just did the best that I could with everything I had learned. I had gone back to a community college to sharpen my writing skills. And um, In Touch Magazine with Charles Stanley at the time, Charles Stanley was uh, running In Touch Magazine, they picked up the article. So the acquisition editor was there and she said, we just need to make it a little shorter, but this is a great, great article. And then the article ended up inspiring them to open up a division um, for parents of children in prison, because that's what it was about. And so um, that was a confidence booster. And the fact that I was able to encourage people as well was a bonus because I really, that was the motivation for me. I wanted to encourage people, not just within ministry walls, but outside. And that just sent me on fire. So I thought, whatever it is I'm afraid of, I'm just going to face it. And one of the things that I realized in an old, old book that I read, it was Nancy Missler. And she communicated, and I never forgot this. And I hear this from time to time, people talking about this, but your thoughts are going to stir emotion. So anything you're thinking, it's going to stir some type of emotion, whether it's positive or negative, whether it's you know fear, whether it's joy, it's going to stir something. We don't even realize it's happening. And that emotion is going to begin to influence a split second decision that you're going to make. Whether you're aware of it or not, you're making a decision about that emotion. If it's fear, you might pull back. If it's joy, you might be inspired to do something new, right? Or to pick up a project that you've laid out. So your thoughts are going to stir emotions. Your emotions are going to influence your choices. And then ultimately, the choices lead to action. Now, what I was trying to do is I was trying to change the action. You can't change the action. You have to change up here in your mind what you're thinking. And so when I read that book, I started applying that in everything. And in fact, I'll tell you, Robert, I took a silly thing to remind myself because I was so dead on to, to get over fear of everything that I had these bracelets that really clanked a lot. They were really, really loud. And I had these bracelets that I would put on on my left arm. And every time I had a thought that was negative and you know when it's negative because you feel anxiety, you feel stress, you feel something that's not good. Right. I would stop for a second and I would think, what am I thinking about? Is it true? Or is it false? Is it an imagination or is it based on fact? And then I would reframe it to what I knew was true. And then I would take that bracelet and put it on the other arm. So by the end of the day, the goal was to have all those bracelets moved from the left arm to the right arm. I know it sounds silly, but it was a, a way for me to physically see that I was renewing my mind, that I was changing the way I was thinking, that I was no longer going to be anchored to fear because I really wanted freedom of that. I knew I had something I needed to do in the world, but this was 
my Achilles heel. This was stopping me from moving forward. And I had frankly had enough. And I thought I got to get over this, right? And so that's how I did it. And that's how I was able to submit articles. And I did a lot of that when I entered into the speech competition, because that was a six month competition, various levels that you have to win to be able to be at the last finalist in Caesar's Palace. And I kept thinking, okay, this isn't my idea. I just did this because everybody's telling me you should do it, you should do it. And I thought if I can just encourage one person, it'll be worth it. I would just get up there like I was speaking to one. And then I would just say, this is just for the audience. I don't care what happens, the outcome. I just want this to be an opportunity for the audience. And it did encourage people. I had in, in Las Vegas when I spoke, the reporter, there was a winner. Now, obviously, I was a top 100, but I wasn't the winner, right? He should have been interviewing the winner. He came over and interviewed me because the people were coming up to me saying, wow, that really touched me. You were speaking to me. Oh, my gosh. How did you know? And the, the reporter was so intrigued that people were coming up to me that he wrote a story about me and about my speech. And I felt, I told him, I felt like a winner because the people resonated with the message. So it all depends how you define success. Oh, so good. So there's a lot in there, but I want to dig back into the, the action steps. And I definitely love those. I teach people similar ideas and things to obviously you have to have awareness of the fear, right? Awareness of the thought and recognizing yes. those, those negative feelings. And, and so many people get stuck in the negative feelings and they just live there, right? They, they live in the mm -hmm. grief and the shame and the guilt and the, and the yuck that the negative feelings create rather than saying, wait, I can, I can control this. I can take, you know, I got to figure out what's causing it, right? What's causing this negative feeling, and that's the awareness, right? So now that I have awareness that and a, and a commitment to control it, all right, what am I going to do differently? And so yeah. now when that negative thought comes, I'm going to turn it around. And I love what you said talking about what do I what do I know is true, right? So this yeah. this this emotion is trying to tell me something is true. Yes. But it, but is but is what it's really telling me what what is actually true? And being able to evaluate that is so powerful. Because so many people get stuck in, and the majority of the things they're stuck on are completely outside of their control. And so it may be true, but is it my responsibility is a huge question to be able to ask yourself, right? Like exactly. all the things going on in the last two years with COVID and travel and, and shutdowns and all of these things that people got wound up about, but they don't have any control. They can't, they can't make any decisions based on those things. Right. right. Your trip got canceled. OK, well, I can't do anything about that trip, but what can I do? Right. And mm -hmm. so so being able to ask yourself, you know, what is the truth in this? And then being able to say, am I responsible for it? <laughs> Those two things are really, really powerful. And then, of course, the physical action of taking a bracelet from one arm and putting it onto the other arm is so celebratory and so um, rewarding. Right. It tells the brain, oh, we just did a really good job. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought the I was brain, such a mess that I needed a visual. <laughs> but the brain, the brain, love we love, we love that. We love getting sticker, right? The little star mm -hmm. sticker. We love being able right. to put our, our message on the refrigerator and say, oh, look, mom and dad, look what I did. Look what I, we love that. Yeah. And so when you do that for yourself and you give yourself permission to celebrate that tiny win, right? And, and it seems like a tiny win, right? Like, oh, well, I just changed that thought from negative to positive, that whatever, like, like that's tiny, but it's so big. Yes. It's so big. It's so powerful because yeah. now you're taking control of your thought life. And that is one of the things that 98% of people don't do. They just don't. They let their thoughts ruminate in the negative. They let their life just go by as a drone. And, and so many people are living on this planet as zombies, slaves to those negative thoughts. Yeah. And they don't think they have an option. Yeah. That's why I love your podcast because you talk a lot about mind body and spirit and when you want to be an entrepreneur online you need to have this figured out you know how you're going to replenish yourself not only see what is true but also what are you grateful for today and and be in the moment of today because there's been a lot of things involved in entrepreneurship and so our work is really an extension of who we are 
So we've got to get our mind right, our mindset right, our attitude right. And every day I journal just to reset, just to reset. Anything that happened the day before, we're going to reconcile it in the morning. I'm going to, again, go through certain questions that I go through to make sure that by the time I'm done, I can get on my computer and I am ready. I am ready to serve. I am ready to give people 100% of my attention. I am ready. But if I didn't do that, I would feel depleted from the day before because some of that stuff carries, right? Some people oh, do it in the evening. Some people do it in the morning. But it's just good to do it daily. Absolutely. Well, and, and I like that you you're calling it a reset, right? But mm -hmm. but the second part you're talking about writing, and I was going to, you know, cut back to the power of writing and, and giving yourself that voice. And journaling is such a powerful way to do that, right? Because journaling mm -hmm. is is a way to to recognize the stories that you're telling yourself, mm -hmm. right? And so exactly. journaling is putting the story you're telling yourself onto paper. And, and we all have stories that we tell ourselves. We have stories that we tell ourselves about the past. We have stories that, that we tell ourselves about what's happening right now. And then we have stories that we tell ourselves about our capabilities, about our self-worth, about our value in the future. And acknowledging these stories and recognizing them gives us the ability to take them to another level. <laughs> gives Absolutely. us the ability to turn many of those stories that we, we look back at and we think we're a victim Right. We we look back at these stories and we tell ourselves the victim story mm -hmm. rather than writing it from the, the, the place of the victor. Mm -hmm. How can I have a victory in this? How can I how can I find success in this? How can I find a lesson in this and focus on that piece of that and tell the story of our past things in a different way? Right. And, and then, of course, telling the stories about our present value. Right. What we bring to the world is is so empowering and that journaling is 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 a huge step in that in that story process um, because the stories we tell ourselves <laughs> of course impact the stories that we tell the world yes it's true and i wouldn't um recommend trying to tackle everything at once because <laughs> if you notice i first tackled writing and my focus was on that on one thing and all the emotions that went with it and then once I was getting published and I was publishing articles, I moved on to speaking, but I didn't do it simultaneously. So I moved on and, and it was that was the next thing I wanted to work on because so many of us, especially entrepreneurs, they they know, but they forget the value of one, <laughs> one thing. And I think that's how people get into so much anxiety and trouble is when they're focusing on too many things. I mean, you could talk about any part of entrepreneurship and there are just multiple ways of doing it, multiple social media platforms, multiple everything. And they forget the value and the power of one. And so when we focus, when I focused on the writing, when I focused on the speaking, I was able to do well because I was focused on that. I mean, a six month competition, that's a lot. That's a lot. Right. Even when I had my my favorite dog was was Charlie. And um, he passed away now, but he lived a long, long life. He was a happy guy. And he he was amazing because when I first had him, my focus was to train him and train him well. And I made sure I had blocked out enough time to focus on him and train him because he was going to be a big dog. He was over a hundred pounds. Right. And I'm just, you know, he was almost equal my weight. I outweighed him by maybe three, three, five pounds. <laughs> so, so I wanted to make sure he was well trained, but, um, but Charlie had incredible focus, right? Charlie, his daily duties was just, looking out the screen door and see who was going, you know, up and down the neighborhood, maybe playing with his duck. He had his favorite duck that he would retrieve, laying on his back, cooling his belly. But when five o'clock came around, I don't know, he didn't have no watch, right? <laughs> he had no iPhone. He knew it was five o'clock and he would find any adult at that point, just sit there and stare at him. <laughs> he developed a habit and he knew exactly when dinner time was. He had this internal clock. And I thought this dog has such focus. Nothing would deter him at five o'clock. As soon as he came around my office, I thought, well, it must be five o'clock. Yeah, but sure is. It's five o'clock. But, you know, we forget that we need to focus on one thing and then we need to build habits around that one thing so that we can accomplish it and excel at it. So it's kind of a two part. You want to know what that one thing is and then what habits am I going to implement to be able to execute that one thing that I want to accomplish? And that's not easy. And I think that's why we end up 
starting something and then starting something else and then starting something else. And many people in my masterminds or when I coach people, they have so many ideas, they're everywhere. And I try to help them distill all the many ideas into one profitable message that's going to bring them revenue, but also is going to serve people because they're everywhere. And I think that's probably the biggest challenge we have today. Well, especially for entrepreneurs that that are visionaries and and idea people, yep. and and then they have to get to the point where okay, we you got to you got to find the one that generates revenue, generate the revenue, and then maybe focus on some of these other ideas. But you've got to outsource and hire and do all these other things to to maintain the you know the revenue stream. Um, so I think the one thing is 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 very important, and I think. You know, we work with people in six domains. You know, Tony Robbins teaches five domains, but you know, you're you talked about mind, body, and spirit, and of course, you know, your financial and your your business, and then I think your environment are all important elements too that that you could use to make decisions about what's the most important thing, right? And yeah. what's the most next most important thing, and focus yeah. on that for you know the month or two months it takes to to develop the habits that that make it solid, right? Like for physical fitness, I think so many people have the same, same issue, right? They, they want to start an exercise program and a diet and, a, and you're changing so many things in your life that your brain is going, Oh no, we're yeah, not doing then, all this. And then people question their purpose, you know, and this comes up a lot. I don't know what my purpose is. My purpose is lost. I got to find my purpose. Your purpose is not lost. It's not. You don't have to find it because it's not lost. <laughs> in fact, my purpose changed throughout my life. When I was in school, my purpose was to get good grades. <laughs> when I got married, my purpose was to make my husband happy and figure out how we can develop our relationship. We've been married for 36 years now. He's the love of my life. But um, when I had kids, my purpose was to be a really great mother. When I was in ministry, my purpose was to serve the community that we had. So the purpose changes. I think what people are really saying is they want fulfillment. Mm. But if they're scattered and they're everywhere and they're doing this and doing that, not focusing on one thing, not developing the habits that are going to give them that one goal, be able to see it manifest, then they're going to start questioning, why am I here? Am I following my purpose? Should I be doing something else? And then they're in that whole hamster wheel, trying something else, something else, something else. But I think what people really want is fulfillment and that comes with focus and just thinking what do i need to do today because you can have fulfillment today and a great way to have fulfillment you had a guest on your podcast that talked about serving and it's so so true that when you serve others and you're outside of yourself that brings a lot of fulfillment so that's just kind of my take on purpose because i see people so scattered with so many ideas and they don't feel fulfilled they feel unfulfilled i think it's because they're not really focusing on one thing. They've got too many, too many pots on the burners, right? Right. Well, exactly. and they get, and somehow we've gotten this idea that that there's one perfect mate, there's one perfect project, there's one perfect job, and and if I don't find that that perfect person to marry, or I don't find that perfect person to uh, perfect project to you know dedicate my life to. That, that I'm missing, right? There's a there's a piece of missing that the, the FOMO is is yeah. dancing around in our heads. And the reality is it's commitment. And and you and I are sitting here, you know, my wife and I have been together for 31 years. You've been together 36 years. You understand that it's commitment. Yeah. It's not the perfect person. Neither one of us were perfect when we started and we're certainly not perfect now. And and you know we continue to grow and continue to grow closer to each other. But it's because we've made a commitment to a journey together. And yes. so, you know, it's my wife and I living this life, you know, for, for a time it's living this life overseas for a time. It was living this life, raising our kids and teenagers. And now it's living this life as grandparents. And so that purpose is constantly changing, but the commitment is it's her and I against the world and, and, yeah. and we're going to do it together, whatever we're doing. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And so, so it, the purpose isn't quite as important as what is the current thing. And I, so I love how, the way you put that. The same thing can be said for entrepreneurs, right? What is, what's the most important thing now for your personal development, right? If you're, if your body is out of shape and, and, and <clears throat> you're overweight and health issues are coming up, 
that might be the most important thing mm -hmm. to take care of for your entrepreneurial journey. Because if your body's not healthy and, and supporting you, entrepreneurship is just going to add stress to that and, and take away from your ability to think well and make choices well that, that lead to more success in your business. And so you've got to choose what is the next important thing that I've got to focus on for the sake of growing my business, taking care of my family and, and taking care of my responsibilities. So that is so helpful, I think, you know, and, and I, I always recommend the book, you know, one thing, um, cause it's, it's, yeah. it's a fantastic, helps yeah. people that don't understand the idea of, of narrowing down, right? We all make these lists and then we prioritize them one through five and then oh, we'll get caught up in, but when you focus on just the one thing, what's the, what's the most important thing yeah. today? That you and got for entrepreneurs, because there's so many things, um, I think they they fear they're going to have regrets, like you were saying, because you explained that so well. And I used to think that way too. I used to think, well, I don't want to, I don't want to end up with regrets at the end of my life. I don't want to live with regrets. But I realized, if we think about regrets, we're living in the past. <laughs> we're so focusing good. in the past all the time. If we talk about regrets. So in just moving forward, you know, we, we decide as an entrepreneur, there are basic buckets, if you will. You've got your income producing work, you've got your list building work, which is basically how you're able to bring people into your community, usually in exchange of some type of free content for an email, and you grow your community. That's one of your greatest assets. And then you have admin, right? But if you're scattered everywhere, you could you could spend a day on admin stuff and not even realize it and think you're working on your business and you're not. So <laughs> you have to realize, you know, what is my priority? You mentioned priority. What is my priority for the quarter? How do I break it down in the month? How do I take care of the income producing work? How do I take care of getting my brand known and list building so that I bring people into my community? And how do I take out a you know, how do I take care of the admin work? Because that's taking a lot of my time. And so we have to see all the time where we're spending our time. That's why I love journaling, because you can reflect back and see what you accomplished. Then you can set goals for the day. It's so, so important. But I think you're right. Sometimes your biggest to do on your business calendar is to get more sleep <laughs> or go for a walk. You know, those things are so valuable. And most people think, oh, no, no, no. I'm talking about how do I make more money? You know what? If you get more sleep and you have time to reflect and maybe journal, you may come up with that winning idea that you need, you know? And so walking, taking care of yourself, eating right, sleeping. We're so sleep deprived these days. So I have to schedule it. I have to tell myself at this hour, I'm going to stop. I'm going to be in bed by a certain time. And and that's that really helps me because I'm most creative early in the morning when the day is still quiet. That's when I'm most creative. That's when ideas come, when I can just, it's just me. And, and, you know, speaking of number one, there's one God, you know, and I, I pray in the morning, I spend time journaling and that's where I reset. And it just helps so much to be able to figure out what I'm going to focus on that day. We will be right back after this short break. This episode is sponsored by the newly released book, Dream Life Planner, Move from Tired and Overwhelmed to Free and Empowered by Noelle L. Peterson available on Amazon, or you can order a personalized signed copy at empower, E-M-P-O-W-E-R, to dream.com. That's empower, number two, dream.com. If you enjoy the show, please like and subscribe, leave a review, tell your friends. Welcome back. Let's get back to more greatness. So a couple things in there. I, I, I love... Somehow in our culture, we've created this idea that if I need to grow my business, I just need to work harder. Yeah. And and we've created this, this growth mindset of harder work versus scaling versus focusing on, you know, and you mentioned some of the pieces that you can scale, that you can mm -hmm. outsource admin, you can outsource, you know, elements of your business that, that aren't the public facing necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, so, so don't think that the only way to grow your business is to, to work harder. I think that's yeah. a big, a big mis misnomer for a lot of folks. The other piece, I love the morning routine. I think routines are so, so important. So I, I want you to specifically identify the pieces of your routine that, that are non-negotiables for you every day. 
the pieces of my routine. Okay, I I get up early, uh, which means I, I do get enough sleep because otherwise I can't get up early. So I typically uh, come down, grab a cup of coffee, and I have my journal already. I have a digital journal, and I do not do it on where my computer is. I do it in another part of the office or another part of the house where I'm not looking at the work stuff. And then I just simply begin to answer a series of questions. I created a template for myself. Now, before coming down when I'm getting ready, um, I will be listening to um, daily audio Bible. They give you uh, verses in the morning. They read the Bible throughout the whole year. And then when I'm done with that, if I'm still getting ready, I will listen to an audio book. So I'm always feeding my spirit. I'm feeding my intellect. I sit down with my journal. I fill out all the answers that I need, what my goals are gonna be. And then from there, I'm ready to come to the computer and then I look and see what's on my calendar and what's going on as far as emails and things like that. But I need that time in the morning. Um, I'm just, I guess I'm a mess if I don't have that time in the morning to be able to just realign things and get focus and clarity. But I think entrepreneurs sometimes, and, and this was something that I realized because it was all about, you know, building your business, building, 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 building. And you get lost in so many things. And I realized for me, it was more about tearing down things than building more. Mm. Tearing down things like, for example, self-reliance, tearing down pride, tearing down any kind of entitlement, tearing down comparison, tearing down frustration, tearing down anger, tearing down fear, right? And it was more about removing and tearing those things down that would get in the way. and. For a while there, I was trying to build and build and build and build, but I had not dealt with these other things. And so there was just a big hot mess. <laughs> so for me, I realized, okay, if I'm building something, I need to also be aware of the things that I need to tear down that can get in the way. Because sometimes we don't realize it. We don't realize it if we're angry. We don't realize it if we're comparing, unless we have that quiet time, like I mentioned, or false expectations, or giving ourselves grace. You know, and the nice thing about journaling is you can see how much you've accomplished, how far you've come, right? Mm -hmm. So so I think for me, I realized in the building process, I need to realize what needs to be torn down. And that's one of the questions that I have in my journal as well, is what is something that has to be realigned or what is something that is, is hindering you right now, um, spiritually, mentally, whatever it might be. So that's one of the questions I ask myself as well. So good. So talked about the non-negotiables there. Um, obviously, you've been married a, a long time. You've been a, a mom and, and stay-at-home mom and, and, and navigated you know, raising kids and then, of course, starting your business. Um, what, are, what are some boundaries or how have you used boundaries to protect elements of yourself? Obviously, the self-care boundary is really important to you, right? Protecting yourself in the morning, protecting that time um, for establishing yourself before you start the day. Uh, what other ways have, have you used boundaries in, to protect the things that are important, the things that you value? You mean in personal life or in work life or? Well, I mean, both, yeah, sure. How, whatever way they overlap. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I know my limits. I know when I am most fresh to be able to serve people. And so boundaries would be learning to say no to things that would take away from something that I already have scheduled. And in fact, I did that recently. Somebody had invited me to be on their podcast and I was looking at my calendar and I said, this is not going to be good. I'm not going to serve them well. And it's in conflict with some other things that I had going on. And so I graciously declined and thanked them, but I, I didn't, you know, and that's what we all live for, right? We all want to be a guest on a podcast. But I looked at that and said, this is not going to work out. So I'm going to have to, you know, nicely decline maybe another time. So there are, um, especially like events, some people love to go to conferences. Sometimes you have to figure out, is this a conference that I, I need to really go to and say no to those things? Or some people get on the digital course thing and they get one digital course after another digital course and they're spending all this money and then they have more pressure because they're trying to make more revenue and they're spending all this money, you know, and have to decide you know, is it yes or no? 
or when people are asking you favors. If, you, if you're a kind-hearted person that most entrepreneurs are because they're so giving, you have to learn to say no sometimes. Uh, it just depends. Or maybe refer them to someone that maybe could answer their question a little better. So protecting my time is important because the time that I have left when I'm not working is time with my husband, time with my family. We always have movie night on Friday night. Sometimes we have to change it to Saturday night, if, depending on the schedule. My husband and I, you know, we find a day that we can have a date night. It's not always every week. It's maybe once a month or once every six weeks or so, but we make that time. Our next one is going to be around 4th of July. We're going to go over by the coast. And so we, we try to do that and protect family time. And so that's in my journal as well is just trying to see how I can, how I can support my family. What is it that I can do differently um, in the next week? And it doesn't have to be big things. It could just be, you know, time with my granddaughter. You know, I haven't had some one-on-one -on -one time with her. Let's let's go to the movies or something, whatever it might be. So, um, so those boundaries of saying no gives me the margin to be able to make sure that I'm there for my friends and my loved ones and for myself too, because you know I need quiet times. So <laughs> I need sleep. <laughs> All so, right. Yeah. So you mentioned mentioned the husband, mentioned the 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 kids and grandkids. So what has been the blessings of of being an entrepreneur and and raising your family? Oh my gosh, the flexibility. It's just so so wonderful to be able to set your own time on a calendar and having that flexibility, not having to commute. You know, I don't hardly ever need the car because I'm at home and I love that. I'm an introvert. I'm a homebody. So um, the fact that I can work from home and serve people, I just love that. That was always appealing to me. And then that gives me little breaks if I need to. Sometimes I go to a program that my granddaughter has. And if I don't have an appointment, I can go to that and support her with that. So it gives me that flexibility. And we recently moved. We used to live in Northern California. We moved to Nevada and we moved back to California because my, my older daughter, my daughter and my granddaughter live with us and she had an opportunity in California and within the company she was with. And so um, we just made that quick decision and say, well, we're a package deal, we'll all move. And so we did that so quickly in just like a, no, I think it was five or six week period to get everything packed up, moved and get settled in. Um, but had I been at a corporate job, I wouldn't have been able to block out a week to move. Um, shortly after that, my husband got sick. I had to block out some time to be with him. And it gives me that flexibility because you never know what's going on, right? And so that's one of the things that I think is just such a blessing and so wonderful about entrepreneurship. Nice. So earlier you mentioned um, a, a basic lead magnet and what what has been helpful for, for building your audience for generating leads? I think when people start, and I'm a copywriter, so keep in mind, I understand landing pages, email sequences, funnels, all of that, the marketing, I understand that. But I'm going to say one of the, the quickest ways, especially if people are getting started, is build relationships. I think relationships are so important when you begin to genuinely serve people, connect with people, get on calls with people, introduce yourself, leverage the conferences you go to, talk to people. You know, we go to conferences, we stay in our own little table you know, begin to network and begin to build those relationships. And then it's amazing how those relationships help you. Um, even my relationship with Ray Edwards, when I became certified, this has been a long lasting, you know, relationship. And now I do some coaching for him and I help his copy students get certified. And that has been an extra blessing. Another relationship that I have with another entrepreneur I'm kind of the designated copywriter for his community. So I'm there helping and serving there. So I think relationships are, are key. Um, you can do all the lead magnets. You could do the funnels. You could do the Facebook ads, all that stuff. And it's always good to have something at a low cost and not put too much in it. Prove that people want it first and try offering it, you know, without Facebook ads and talk about it wherever you are, whether it's on YouTube or a podcast talk about it and the people are interested then you know after 30 days or so then maybe put a little bit of money in it so you can build your email list but when it comes to really getting yourself out there 
those connections are so valuable, very, very valuable. So let's dig a little deeper into the power of connection. And, and you've mentioned, you know, some people that you've connected with and worked with Ray Edwards, Mike Kim and, and others for, for those, those people just getting started. You know, how would you encourage them to, to start making connections? Well, you know, one of the first things I did before I went in the online space, I just joined the Chamber of Commerce and I started connecting with people that way. And one of the gentlemen that I met there, he did websites. I didn't need one at the time. I just wanted a logo. And we've had a business relationship for over 10 years now. <laughs> and he is not only does he service my website, but we also partner. So he does websites and when people need copy, then they come to me. So there's an example of just somebody local. So you can, if you're just starting out, I would take advantage of maybe even putting a review on someone's book or a review on someone's podcast and begin to follow them and begin to interact by, I mean, who doesn't love a review, right? you're going to get noticed <laughs> by those people. So begin to converse. Or if you go to an event, take notes for the speaker and say, what you talked about was so amazing. I got this tip from Mike Kim. This was so amazing. I took notes for you and maybe some areas that you can expand on or some areas that really resonated with me just so that you can have some feedback. Because every speaker loves to get feedback cards, right? But if you do that for them and think, how can I serve this person? Just because they're an entrepreneur or they're on stage, does it mean they don't like being served too? And so you can just begin by just getting book reviews or podcast reviews or even on YouTube and start connecting. And when they see you, they're going to recognize your name. And then maybe you can, you know, invite them to be a guest on your podcast or wherever it is that you do. So I think you can start small that way and you think, oh, that's going to take so long. But you know what? You get noticed because most people won't do it. That's so powerful. So true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think you mentioned earlier, leveraging conferences, making mm -hmm. sure that you're intentional, right? Don't sit in a corner or sit at your table, start right. meeting people and, and start creating relationships because you, you never know who's in the room. <laughs> you never know if that person that's going to, you know, refer you to, you know, millions of dollars of business is sitting right next to you and, and your arms are crossed at the table waiting for the next yeah. event, next speaker. Um, and so, yeah, definitely take yeah. advantage of those and, and follow up with those connections, right? Follow yeah. up with the people that you meet at the conference and say, you know, Hey, we met at the conference, you know, I need to learn more about what you do and, and where you're doing it and how I can refer people to you. Right. Yeah. Or take so, a picture and put it on Instagram and ask them, can I put it on Instagram and, and just begin that conversation with them. I think, I was trained young. You don't talk to strangers, right? I was I was trained to fear strangers, right? And so to do this took a lot out of me. And I just started building that practice that every time I was at the grocery store in line, I would talk to the person behind me or in front of me. And then any time I was somewhere waiting at a store, I would talk to people just to get in the habit of starting a conversation. And you know what? Most of the time, people love having a conversation with you. So, Absolutely. Yeah, they do. And even if you see somebody that looks like grumpy pants and you start talking to them, you soon realize, oh my gosh, they were so nice. I would have totally missed out on meeting this person. That was so amazing. And I mean, I've, I've met veterans. I've met so many people just by doing that. Because when you move, you have to get utilities turned on, all this stuff. So right. everywhere standing in line. And I just started conversations with people. And you find out a lot about the area. You find out, I mean, they just are an open book right but i had to learn because i was taught don't talk to strangers oh, so i had to learn to do that so powerful and so and so helpful okay you mentioned earlier one of the things you talked about was you know if you're you're feeling down and 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 wanting to get to that next level of growth is to serve others um obviously contribution is, is a big part of of our faith background how has contribution helped you in in your business or or how has your business allowed you to contribute more, give back more? I think there's always opportunities. Um, if you're online, there's going to be people that you encounter and talk to. And there have been times where I 
support people completely free because I see that they're in pain or they have high anxiety and it may not even be related to business. And so I figure make the most of every opportunity. Not every opportunity is to generate revenue. Some of it is meant for you to just step up and maybe open your mouth and share two or three sentences, you know, or maybe affirm someone or or maybe just um, acknowledge something good that's happened or maybe even wish them a happy birthday, whatever it might be. But I think that helps because your brand, who you are, who, how you show up, it's all part of who you are. And oftentimes when I ask people, well, how did you find out about me when we get on a one-on-one -on -one call? They said, ah, oh, somebody recommended you. I just knew you seem like a nice lady or something. So I'm like the nice lady. So whatever, as long as they know that, uh, you know, my integrity is there, they know that I'm there to serve them. If it works out, we can work together. Great. But I'm not going to pressure them or anything. So uh, I'm okay with the nice lady thing. But, uh, but anyway, it's funny. It gives it, it's part of who you are as a brand. And so when people when you're yourself and that's advice my husband gave me when I started doing this, he said, Marissa, just be yourself. And I said, are you sure? <laughs> like I am here at home. And he says, yeah, just be yourself. And I took that advice. And so a lot of times I am myself when I'm on live streams. I'm it's good to be polished when you're doing maybe a TED talk or you're doing some type of international speech. But most of the time we're having conversations with people, right? And that helps people be seen and heard and feel like you're talking to them. So you want to be able to communicate like you're talking to one and then you'll talk to many. So mm -hmm. I think the contribution part just goes hand in hand because we're serving all the time. And every opportunity isn't always revenue. It's just a way to impact. Mm -hmm. So good. Well, and, and your husband is so wise because the power <laughs> of authenticity is, is, I think it's lost a little um, in, in reminding people, especially in the online space, especially, you know, even in socials that, that you need to be you <laughs> and yeah. the world needs to hear your voice. The, yeah. you know, the other people already are taken. And so why would you need to try to act like them? Yeah, exactly. And, and so... That's and so see that that might even come through feeling like comparing yourself, you know, to other people, and that might come from just maybe in our mind we're thinking, oh, oh, we're trying to be authentic, but inside we might feel insecure and we might compare ourselves to someone else, and without realizing it, we're trying to be like someone we're not because we're trying to make up for that. So that's why journaling. And really reflecting helps to be able to let that surface. Hmm. So what, what has been the impact of, of being an author? I love the fact that we can communicate our heart in with words. So being able to write articles that people enjoy, and it's a real quick win. Right now, I'm working on an ebook. It's going to be a short read like probably maybe 30,000, maybe no more than 40,000 words, not a big, big book. But I think people enjoy those quick wins. And I think people like to be able to process something at their own pace when they're reading. Because when you read, oftentimes when there's something really awesome, if, you, if it's a physical book, you'll grab that highlighter and you'll just highlight it, right? Because you want to remember it. And when we write, we want to make sure we're writing something that people will want to pick up a highlighter, right? But if you can write something that's in digital form and people can now read it and consume it, I think that's a wonderful thing because it's just another form of communication. Video is wonderful. Some people prefer video, but different people prefer different things. But I think the writing, I don't think that's ever going to go away. I think people love books. They love reading. They love articles. I think it's something that they can consume when it's quiet. You know, a lot of times if I get an article in my inbox, I don't delete it. I'll just save it and wait till I have time to go back and read it and chew on it a little bit. And so it's not something I want to just glance through. It's something I want to experience as I'm reading it. Well, and I think there's there's still um, millions more blogs than there are podcasts. And so podcasts haven't passed up um, blogs in by not even like I think they're they're four or five digit zeros away from 
catching <laughs> blogs. And so I, I agree the written word has has power and even the written word in the digital space mm -hmm. um, is, is a powerful medium. Um, I'm one of those people that loves audiobooks. And then mm -hmm. I buy the written book because I like to look at it over and over again. <laughs> so, right, right. So, so the audio book works for consuming the books, but then I, I buy both because I love to see the words. And 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 I I used to have a rule about highlighting it. And I I was I was I never wanted to write in a book, and now I, I write in all my books. And so <laughs> my husband is like that. We cannot have the same book because. <laughs> I like to really break it in, highlight notes, and he likes it crisp and nothing on it. And I just want to get into it and tear it up, you know, just consume it completely. But, but yeah, for entrepreneurs, just having the habit too, of uh, whether it's audio or reading books is really, really important. Um, I think that's very, very helpful. And it only takes, I mean, whatever time you have in the morning when you're getting ready, you can put these wonderful little ear pods in and, listen to something that's encouraging and something that's going to lift you up or educate you, inspire you. And I think that's important to have a daily practice of that as well. Oh, absolutely. Lifetime learning is, is a commitment to yeah. yourself and, yeah. and it's, it's really a part of that self care, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to make you a better person, which makes you a better business person, which obviously leads to, you know, better things. So right, right. you can't go wrong. Yeah. unless you're reading stuff that's going to, you know, negatively impact you. And of course, most of the personal development stuff out there is, is pretty powerful and pretty good um, about helping. All right. So I love to talk about play and fun and how do you incorporate play and fun into your work? Um, I have a quirky sense of humor when I'm at home with my family. Uh, we laugh a lot. We all have a sense of humor. So um, that to me is so much fun because sometimes we are in belly laughs. I mean, we are just, uh, we feed off each other. So those are some of the most great times that we have is, even my husband and I, when we're together, we make each other laugh. It's just awesome. So humor is great. I love humor and I love to um, watch movies with my family. I love walks. Now that I'm back in California, in Nevada, you would just cook and roast. <laughs> it was so sad because you'd have to, I'd have to get up like at walk at 4.30 in the morning or five and it was already hot. And here it's so beautiful. So I want to get back into walking more because it's beautiful all day long. So yeah, as far as what I love to do, um, I love just, you know, summer nights. I love humor. I love movies with the family. I love being able to spend some time looking at nature walks whether it's the park at the very least so those are the things that really uh, fill me up i'm kind of a simple person i don't have to go somewhere to enjoy life and nature um i just like to be able to have that that time with the family that's beautiful all right so this one's gonna be a little more challenging because you've got a lot of history so um most memorable date with your husband Oh, most memorable date. I will say a trip that we made for our anniversary in Monterey. We had such a beautiful time in Monterey. And I think because we were near the beach and he, um, when we had our, our dinner, they, they had a dessert. We don't usually eat dessert and they brought dessert. And I go, why did they bring dessert? We didn't order dessert. And it had in there some like icing or something they put on there decorative that said happy anniversary on it. And there's a beautiful dessert. It was just every part of that that time we spent in Monterey was so memorable. So I think that was one of my favorite memories. Nice. All right, Marissa, what's your big dream? My big dream, I would say is to, let's see, that's a tough one because I feel like I'm living the dream right now. Um, so I would say um, to be able to publish my book. That's nice. something I've wanted to do. So I would say that would be something because it has a lot of the stories, a lot of the things I've wanted to share for many years. And um, as you said, I have a lot of history, so we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I've got I've got a lot that I can share because I've lived a few years. Right. So I think that would be something of a dream come true. Yeah. Nice. All right. You spend an hour with an entrepreneur 
And you're going to leave them with Marissa's words of wisdom. What would you share? Okay. So for entrepreneurs, whether you're in the beginning stage, in the middle, or maybe you've reached a plateau, don't let fear creep in. And remember that fear needs permission to exist. Don't give it permission. Oh. So powerful. Marissa, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate all the wisdom that you shared and appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. It was fun. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. If you enjoyed the show, please like, subscribe, or leave a review. We have a free gift for you at addvaluemindset.com. That's addvaluemindset.com. We've collected some of the best mindset secrets shared by successful entrepreneurs on our podcast and we want to give them to you for free. ADDValueMindset.com In our next episode, Oliver Wood is creating a space where mind, body, and spirit grow together. He talks about creating freedom through discipline and how to help clients deal with wellness and stress, and most importantly, how to fuel and nourish their bodies for good.